Have you ever heard somebody say that the Bible is inspired by God? What does that even mean? We're going to talk about that a little bit today. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together, the channel where we read and reflect on one chapter of the Bible every weekday. I'm Darren. I'm one of the hosts and pastors on this channel. Today, we have the privilege of seeing one of the most important theological ideas about the Bible played out in a conversation from Paul to his protege, young Timothy. Let's pray now and ask God to open our eyes today to his word, and then we're going to jump right in. God, thank you so much for your scripture. Thank you that you've chosen to reveal a bit about yourself to us. Lord, I pray that you help us to see you today as we re read these words, Lord. I pray that you shape us and form us into who you want us to be. God, open our eyes today to uh, what it means to have the scriptures inspired by you. We thank you again, and we ask you to bless this time together. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3. But know this, hard times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness, but, de but denying its power. Avoid these people. For among them are those who worm their way into households and deceive gullible women, overwhelmed by sins and led astray by a variety of passions, always learning and never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Jan Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. They are men who are corrupt in mind and worth worthless in regard to the faith. But they will not make further progress, for their foolishness will be clear to all, as was the foolishness of Janus and Jambres. But you have followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, and endurance, along with the persecutions and sufferings that came to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and yet the Lord rescued me from them all. In fact, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Evil people and impostors will become worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know those who taught you, and you know that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So here in chapter 3, Paul starts by, by warning Timothy of some dangers and uh, telling him he needs to keep an eye out for some things. He paints a picture of the type of people we need to stay away from and tells him to stay away from them. That's the first half. The second half of the chapter, uh, it's a, it's a sig very significant charge Paul is giving Timothy. He tells him that he has already been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. These scriptures have played an instrumental role in Timothy coming to salvation and trusting in Christ. Timothy knows the power of the scriptures, and, and Paul wants him to remain faithful to the word that he has been taught. So to convince him, or better, to remind Timothy of the importance of these scriptures, Paul explains where they have come from. Listen to this verse. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. 
And then he says, and it's given to you so that you may be mature and equipped for every good work. So what does it mean when we say that the word of God is inspired? I need to show you a couple other verses that are related to this uh, so we can kind of build a framework for understanding this. And then I'm going to give you the five main ideas on what this actually means to be inspired. Okay, first, 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21. He says, Above all, you know this. No prophecy of Scripture comes from the prophet's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God, as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So here we see that the biblical authors believed that these prophetic books, at a minimum, were written in a way that men were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Men spoke from God. God carried them along. Then let's flip to Acts 1.16. We see that the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David. And what did the Holy Spirit say? Well, after that, Luke Luke quotes two Psalms regarding the fate of Judas. So in this case, we see that the Holy Spirit is attributed with the spoken word that came from David's pen in the Psalms. Then today in 2 Timothy, we see that the scripture is inspired from God. And the Greek word there is theopneustos, which means breathed out or, or God breathed. Okay, that's the background. The point I want to make here is that without any doubt, the biblical authors saw that the scriptures had a divine origin. If you get nothing else today, take that away from this chapter. The scriptures have a divine origin. Paul wanted Timothy to know that because when he recognizes that, he would see the value in the scripture and keeping it close to him. It should be taken seriously. So what does it actually mean to be inspired by God? Well, there's five basic camps here, and uh, I'll give you the categories that Millard L. Erickson spells out in his Christian theology book. That's one of the most widely used seminary textbooks for theology. So it's a pretty good resource for us to get an understanding of this. Uh, number one, the intuition theory. This means that God didn't directly influence the writing, but rather created people with strong gifts. In this view, other religious writings are just as inspired because other writers are gifted as well, like Aristotle or Plato or Buddha or whoever. They would be just as gifted and uh, that would also be inspired writings. Now, I don't think that this uh, theory actually accounts for what we have read in Scripture today, 2 Timothy or 1 Peter or in Acts. So uh, this one isn't my favorite. Uh, Number two, the illumination theory. This takes takes it a step further and says that these gifts that men have are actually heightened by God for these purposes of writing. Uh, but, But in this case, it still isn't the Holy Spirit directly influencing the author writing at the time. Basically, just the Spirit heightens the author's consciousness, allowing him to have a, a supernatural ability to discover truth. I personally don't find this compelling either uh, because of what we just read, the idea that the Holy Spirit spoke through David, the words that were written in the Psalms. It seems to uh, discount that for me. Number three, the dynamic theory. This is a theory that considers a combination of both divine and human activity. Here the Spirit shapes the thoughts and the ideas of the writer, but lets the writer put the verbal expression to the thoughts and ideas. In this case, the the personality or style of the author will clearly come through, and the thoughts and ideas and intent behind it will have been inspired or directed by God. Number four, the verbal theory. Here we have the Holy Spirit actually guiding the writer beyond the thoughts 
to the actual words. Basically, the influence from the Spirit is so strong that the exact words God wanted to are on the words of the pages. Usually, though, people in this camp point out the fact that they're not saying this is a dictation thing where, uh, where God actually gives them a download of all the words. And number five, we actually have the dictation view. Uh, this is a, a digital download concept. Basically, God just took the human author and used him for dictation purposes. So this theory doesn't seem very likely to me because if you read the scripture, especially in the original languages, there's no question that the personality and the style of the authors comes through very clearly. So I don't think dictation is a very... Um, uh, favorable or, or persuasive option for me. There are clearly human and divine aspects to this, to this book. So where do I stand? Well, that doesn't matter too much, uh, but I will say that the majority of Christian thinkers I respect and I study and I care about would be some variation of number three or number four. Uh, I personally think that when we meet Jesus, he'll explain to us exactly how all of this worked, and I'm sure it'll be some supernatural process that we haven't quite articulated. But for now, we know that God is the origin of the scripture. The scripture is inspired by God. And if it has a divine origin, we should respond accordingly by keeping these words on our lips and in our hearts. Speaking of hearts, let's hide the word in our hearts today. Today, we launch a new memory verse, and it is 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. We will see this verse each day for the next couple of weeks, so consider memorizing it with us. We'll see you all next time. <music>